For 3 years I've been juggling between a 3 monitor setup and a super ultra wide at home. When I finally got the money to buy ultra wide for home office I was the happiest man in the world. I believe that it saves me time, but I wonder if that is true or am I only compensating? Before I sell it and go back to 3 monitor setup, I wanted to do exact same tasks on both setup like studying, holding meetings, filming courses and then do some coding and answer once and for all, does the size really matter? So I'm here at the office where we have this 3 monitor setup and I will use my laptop here as a third screen because in reality most likely I will only upgrade one screen at a time and never buy three of the same kind. So let's start with the most exciting stuff first, reading emails. Exciting stuff, emails. Thank you, thank you. So when we answer emails, we might have this open pop-up here and one of the Chrome windows, for example, for checking some facts or even ChatGPT. We might also take notes of something that needs to be done from this email. We might have a to-do application here and the calendar basically to put some stuff. If you're not doing something right now, you are putting it into some to-dos or maybe into your calendar if you're a bit organized. And to make most out of this setup, I am using the Display Fusion tool. It has a lot of cool features like splitting the screens into two. It can also snap windows, manipulate windows, move them on their own automatically. And for this multi-monitor setup, you could just use the regular windows uh, snapping by just dragging and positioning some windows at the ends and it will just position it just fine. But to be fair, I will use Display Fusion in both setups best to my abilities. Now I usually tend to keep my email uh, here on the left. You can see there I have a bunch of bitcoins that I am uh, supposed to collect. But if you were to reply to emails, I will keep it on the left. Then I would take some notes and move through the right. And this is pretty much what I would do if I would have to go to my bank and check my accounts or maybe schedule some meetings. Okay, I'm curious to see how this compares to the ultra wide. So let's look at that setup right now. And this is where I believe that the ultra wide has the advantage due to the real estate so that I can see multiple windows at the same time. So let's do the same thing here at my home office on the Dell 49 super ultra wide monitor. I've set up similar windows here as I did on the office setup and all windows are a bit smaller as this screen is uh, equivalent to two 27 inch monitors. So obviously not three as in the previous setup. Setup. So here I have the notes opened where I'm obviously reading what I'm saying right now. And here I have the emails that would be Google that I would be Googling, right? There is a calendar. I have the chat GPT here where I would ask it some question to summarize something for me. And then here I would put the task that I need to do something. And after becoming a father, I suddenly went to uh, like seven hour, hours of free time that I had after work to maybe one or two hours. And I still wanted to study, do YouTube, make courses and do some office tasks here. here. So anything that would save me time like these stream decks and all the, all the peripherals, uh, I would consider it. And I believe ultra wide saves me time. And that is important because becoming a parent means that years will go by in practically weeks. So taking a lot of family photos and videos on all family events is pretty much the only way to cherish those memories. So I edit about uh, one video a week or a few photos a week, depending on how many birthdays we have that particular week. However, I see where multiple monitor setup could be a beneficial in this case, because here you can take the advantage of three big screens, which uh, where one of them could be 4K. And the other advantage is that you can upgrade one really expensive monitor over time so that you can preview the entire screen of your footage like I have here. For example, here I have the project where I'm editing and previewing the uh, videos. But here on the right, I might have the full screen preview of that video. And here I could never open some panels with my assets. And on the left, I could have some notes that I am reading from uh, like I'm doing right now. So if you do a lot of professional video editing, then you probably know what to do. So for photos, I have a nice separation here of what I'm doing. For example, uh, I'm using Lightroom. So Lightroom has this nice feature where you can open the preview in a of a photo or maybe a grid view in a different screen so that I can see the full screen that I am editing. And here I can do some changes to the photo. If I would to, for example, make it in black and white, I can preview that on my dedicated screen. But again, if you're a professional with photos, then you know which dedicated screen you might need for the task. But the question still remains, is the ultra wide worth it all this money? And no, this is not a cliffhanger just to keep you hanging to watch until the end, or maybe it is. Watch until the end to see. Now, this is obviously a bit of disadvantage for the ultra wide as it's not a specialized tool for the photo and video. I've been wishing ultra wide monitor for years now. And when I finally managed to scrape some money to buy it, I felt like I, I won the lottery. 
minus the millions on the bank account and the yacht in my backyard, of course. But I was the coolest guy, and not only among my two imaginary friends, but perhaps in a whole building. Suddenly it felt like I'm actually doing something important here at the office. It feels like I belong here. I even made this custom desk here so that it will fit the monitor. Actually it's the same size, but since it's a smaller desk, the monitor looks even bigger. And when some of my imaginary friends actually come to visit, I get to say that, oh, while yes, this is an uh, ultra-wide monitor, uh, silly me, I forgot that I put it there actually. <laughs> and here is me editing this very video that I'm recording now. I can set up multiple workspaces here, I can have multiple windows where I would have some controls and uh, resources and all of my videos listed here. I would have a huge timeline, not that the size matters. I would then be able to preview my video and uh, see the full screen and everything. Now I cannot preview 4K videos because the obvious screen is not 4K, but I would still utilize the multi-screen setup that I have behind the Adobe where I could search for some tutorials or find some file, local files on my PC or maybe even work on some files in the Photoshop which I might then import back into the Adobe Premiere into my videos. Speaking of photos that I'm editing, here I have Photoshop open and uh, for ultra wide, it's... Uh, and here we can see that the actually the height of this monitor is quite a, at a disadvantage unless you are editing Clint Eastwood videos. If you are doing any retouching or anything, sure you can put all these panels at the side and then just use the center of the screen. But uh, I don't know, I'm not quite uh, sold on it. I also use a lot of Lightroom for organizing and uh, retouching a lot of photos from the same events. And Lightroom, if I'm being completely honest, it's even worse than Photoshop because it's just a disaster. You have this empty space here that you paid a lot of money for and that you cannot use for pretty much anything. Now for me personally, I am perfectly willing to go over this trade-off and keep this monitor in front of me. As for my family photos, the most important thing for me is that everybody has their head in the frame, so everything else is a bonus. And colors are quite good, as since this is IPS display, it's uh, from the Dell's Ultra Sharp series, which is known for very good color reproduction and a very clear picture. So for me the ultra white works somehow, I'm willing to go over all the sacrifices, but if you're doing anything more than 30% of your work in front of uh, your screen with photos, then the multi-setup monitor actually works quite better for you. Anyway, I do a lot of streaming and a lot of presentations online and I also record YouTube videos and courses a lot. So this is uh, where I do a lot of my work actually. So here on the left I might have the recording overview or I might share PowerPoint that I am presenting or I might even share this entire screen because then that way I know that everybody who is participating in a meeting is actually looking at this very screen and seeing exactly the same thing that I am seeing on it. And I might have the presentation with some notes that I might read too or I might have additional notes on the side that I could reference to and see what I'm actually doing. Then I will have meeting participants so that I can actually see how people are reacting, if they're reacting at all. And I might have some Google open or ChatGTP just so that I can pretend that I actually know the answer that people are asking me about. And this works just fine because again, there is there are five windows. I guess you could split one into six, but I, it doesn't feel quite right for me. But this work setup works actually quite fine. So I love having a big screen and that's giving me overview in front of me. So when recording courses and tutorials and doing presentation, sharing is a bit tricky because you cannot share the entire screen because everybody else will just see one line, right? Now the workaround for the ultra wide is this region to share, for example, which would then put a window that you're going to share, which is basically a transparent window and you would just drag it around your screen uh, where you want to share. As a matter of fact, a lot of times when I'm having a video presentations or meetings, I would have the laptop connected to my screen and then share the laptop screen, but I might have some notes here uh, where I'm reading from, then I could have some chat or something from uh, here. I will have the main presentation. Now there is a bit of empty space here which I could use for something, probably for nothing useful, but then I would have the browser here 
and maybe some uh, chat again or some chat GPT or whatever or maybe control over what I'm sharing and what I'm displaying and one another thing to consider is where you're gonna put your webcam you probably want people to see you right you could put it here and glue it to the top of the monitor but since I use the uh, teleprompter because I'm not smart enough to remember all of my lines from my videos I would actually have it mounted right here on this arm that will hold my teleprompter and the screen that I'm reading from, the old mobile that I'm repurposing, and the actual webcam behind it. Now it looks quite ugly, but uh, some if you have any ideas on how I can keep this big giant block of here and still not intrude my monitor, I would really appreciate it. But it's a thing to consider if you are sharing a lot to very important people, and if you're like me, so that the imposter syndrome kicks you really hard in the guts while you're talking about something you don't really know what you're talking about. Both setups work fine for streaming and meetings, but multi-monitor is a bit easier. And now let's do something real serious. And that is what I'm testing gaming here. So here we have Far Cry running on the middle screen. And now I'm recording this with some stutter. So it's, I, I don't know, it works fine. You, however, have two other monitors that you're pretty much not using. You could uh, put some map or maybe some cheat sheet or some documentations here, some Googling something or maybe a Discord chat if you have any friends to talk to. Luckily for me, I don't have any, so I never have anything open beside the actual game I'm trying to play which takes me about 20 or 30 minutes because that's how much free time I have. Of course, the advantages is that you could have one of the screens dedicated to gaming so that it's, I don't know, VA panel and high refresh rate or whatever you might have on the gaming as priority. But uh, so this is, you've probably seen gaming on multiple screens before. Well, this is an easy one because the size of your screen determines your coolness among your imaginary gaming friends. However, this screen is obviously not meant for gaming. And some older games do not even support the ultra-wide uh, resolution natively. And even new ones like, like this Assassin's Creed that I'm playing, it gets these black bezels on the side in cutscenes, which uh, I basically ignore because uh, I know that I have 30 more minutes of game time before I have to do something else. But my son actually plays Flight Simulator and it's one of the rare occasions where he is able to sit still in 30 minutes without any explosions or something drastically happening in front of him, uh, unlike majority of you who are just going to skip this video because you are too busy to watch everything the time. If you're not a competitive gamer, then this will do just fine. If you have a good graphic card that is because my pc struggles a bit with loading screens and the huge levels so with a lot of details so it looks good enough for me and i'd be tempted to award it a tie here for this screen but i envision the rage that will come in the comment section and of course cancellation of my channel so i will call it a draw here fair enough and again this monitor wasn't made for gaming it has the ips panel which is a bit slower but my only problem with va panel especially on the screen this size is viewing angles if you would have to move even a slightly bit the color shift is very noticeable which is especially seen on dark mode, which I use on majority of my editors. You can game on both setups if you buy VA ultrawide, but IPS panel always wins for me. So when I started studying uh, management on the Arctic University in Norway last year, I used the three monitor setup and I would use the third screen in a vertical configuration because that would make, make this task uh, much easier for me. But I would also have multiple windows open at the same time. For example, I would have emails or the communication with some other colleagues then i would have notes open in the middle screen and then i would have the document that i'm actually writing an essay then i might have the google translate because it was in norwegian i would keep the preview here of the lesson or the presenter and then i would probably have the chat or some other tool browser or whatever google here on the right and that is all fascinating but we are not here to learn to learn because i'm talking about learning <laughs> what a crowd this is where I would expect ultrawide to shine for me for those cognitive tasks where you need uh, a lot of focus and uh, very little distraction. So here I would have quick reference to notes, uh, maybe music player, or I could use this space for something else that I see fit. I would then basically have this document that I might be writing or reading about, Google for referencing or another document that I could be copying text from because uh, that's how I studied or maybe I could move my notes here where I would go over what I've learned already and then go over the repetition of those notes. I could use another monitor screen for something for researching 
and uh, checking some reference things, then I could use the ChatGPT because uh, that is how kids study these days. And I wish I had this tool while I was studying. But since I was studying in Norwegian, I would always have the translation here. I might even have it a bit smaller uh, just so that I can translate some word or maybe have a dictionary where I could look up some words for there. And here, Ultrawides again uh, is a clear winner for me because it reduces friction when I'm sitting down and learning and I can just launch all my windows, sit down, concentrate on what I'm supposed to do and then uh, go on with my life. Now, there is a bit deeper reason for this comparison rather than just getting views on YouTube and that is because I work as a consultant, meaning that I work at the setup that I have at hand. Here at the office we have multiple monitor setup and we have the ultrawides also or we are just getting them right now. At home I have the ultrawide but sometimes I work in a traffic with a laptop. So when I go to client for example office I don't get the fanciest and the best screen. Usually those are reserved for people who are working there, rightfully so right? But I am still expected to perform and that is why I pretty much need to adapt to different setups. But here we have the usual setup for the front-end developer where I might have some emails, communication and maybe music running on. Then I would have one or two editors open because I would work in one or multiple files here. Then I would have a web page running and then probably a console or even multiple consoles which I would keep here uh, below and up because sometimes I would run several processes in order to build the application. You know, typically you run one for the components, for example, and one for some preview and one for whatnot. And sometimes I might even split this part into several. So this is how I spend most of the time uh, on work. And here, obviously, I expect Ultrawide to shine because for me personally, it suits me the best. Now here I might again have some notes, then have some music playing have a code here and maybe have a code reference on this side here or maybe I would just move uh, some reference completely here on the left where I would need to look at something. Either uh, it would be a copy of the code or maybe some documentation reference that I will look at. I will have the actual front-end application running here. So it will be my application. I will probably have the mobile version as well if I'm doing something with mobile apps or if I'm doing even the simple website I could just look at it here and then I would have one or two consoles for the front and uh, some of the tooling that I'm running on the back end. Now the coding experience as a concept is uh, relatively important to me because it gets those few hours out of the week or month where I would actually get joy from programming which otherwise could feel a bit cumbersome or I would not just bother at all sitting here. Now when it comes to backend development, which I do less lately, here I would actually quite enjoy working in the two or three monitor setup. I would have emails and communication here on one side and then I would do the main coding here. I might even split it in uh, several windows like this. Again, one or two editors, multiple files open and then I would probably have the client or the application running in a console and I would switch to ChatGPT or researching something in the browser. And when I work on pure backend tasks somehow my brain switches to a less distraction mode so I actually prefer having uh, less windows and uh, less things popping up and happening at the same time but uh, this setup of even two monitors of course a bit uh, larger monitors works just fine for me. Now when working with pure backend it could be a bit different I might have two or three screens which work just fine for this setup I might have some documentation here code and then maybe just probing the API itself, just seeing what it happens. So I might have the front end here that I'm tech testing against and maybe one or two consoles or maybe I would switch between the code reference and uh, copy copying some code that I might, might have. I would probably use ChatGPT here in this window. So for backend, I actually don't seem to have any preferences. That's how my brain switches to backend work. I don't know what's happening, but uh, I can work on pretty much any setup. Of course, I prefer bigger real estate because I can then open documentation and see it at the same time. But you can do the same with multi monitor setup. So the score is exactly as I predicted it, mainly because it was me who scripted this video and it was me who recorded it. But I did try to make both scenarios shine and to use them properly because I do use them on, in my everyday professional life. But let's just ignore the score and I can tell you what I think about this. So productivity is much better on the ultra wide for me. There is less friction when I'm doing some particular tasks. The ergonomics for the ultra wide are much better for me because there is no bezel. It's just one screen, one monitor that I'm looking at. Cost is pretty much the same for both setups depending on which monitors you buy. But the problem that I mentioned is that buying three monitors at the same time, which are quite expensive, is not realistic for me. Coolness, 
Come on, there's no comparison for me. Sitting in front of multiple monitors looks like you're working in a security guard. And there's nothing wrong being a security guy. But the ultra wide will definitely get you some points, you know, with the ladies. Get it? Because ladies like... anyone? But coolness and overall experience sitting in front of it is definitely important. Even if it doesn't save me any time, it feels good sitting in front of it. And that is important since I do sit about 10 to 12 hours in front of monitors. So for the time being, my heart still belongs to the ultra wide. I might replace it with an ultra wide that is perhaps double the size. Until that day comes, here you can see how I use this monitor for programming. Bye.